Hey, everybody. Good to see you all. Happy Saturday. Thanks for joining me. Bismarck, hello, hello, hello. Good to have you with me. All right, I think we're ready to go. <laughs> Joseph, um, Mohammed, hello there. Flora Bama and Jody, hello, hello. Good to see you all. Thanks for joining me on a Saturday, beautiful Saturday. Martha, hello there. Florio, good to have you back. <laughs> you're so lucky. You're on a golf course and you're tuning in. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> how's, uh, how's the game going, Florio, uh, the golf game? You know, I, I should learn how to play golf, guys. I I never, I, I think I only um went to the putt-putt range and that's about it. Uh, I, I, I don't... I haven't played an actual golf game. <laughs> Dino and Thomas, hello there. Andrea, hello from Italy. Italy. Siempre, hello. Again, a bunch of uh, regular names. Um, Albert <laughs> Einstein, hello again, my friend. Yeah, today we have a uh, pretty good weather here too, Florio. Um, it's very, very hot and dry. Um, yeah, so it's a good day. Uh, I think I'll, uh, I'm probably gonna wait until the sun goes down a little bit and then go outside and do some gardening today. But guys, uh, today let's talk about hydroponics. Um, I know we talk about hydroponics all the time, but I, th I think we should talk more about hydroponic. <laughs> to get people um you know uh started into it if you know if you've never done hydroponic before uh, i think you should look into it and um you know take it up as a as a side hobby or something and uh try some uh because because winter winter is approaching very quickly so um you know uh i think taking gardening inside is going to be a lot of fun Oh, it's raining hard in the Philippines. Oh, man. Uh, I hope there's no flood and stuff like that going on. Uh, I see a bunch of videos around the world. Uh, like, for example, in the U.S., in Louisiana, they had they just had this had that hurricane. It was terrible. But, yeah, hope everybody's be, uh, staying safe and uh, able to do a lot of gardening, indoor, outdoor, doesn't matter. Just, just go out there and do something. <laughs> Grow something. <laughs> All right, Master Blend. <laughs> you know, I, I love Master Blend. It's one of the, um, uh, I, I would say it's the cheapest, uh, most effective uh, uh, hydroponic nutrients out there. Because, uh, you know, you, you buy by the pound and that thing lasts forever. You know, you could use it in soil too. So you can mix uh, the hydroponic solutions for Master Blend and then just water your plants that are in soil. It's, it will still work. Oh man, yeah. I you know sometimes we get uh, so much rain, and sometimes we don't get enough rain. It is crazy, you know. Uh, in parts of the U.S., it's, it's super dry. In some parts of the U.S., it's really wet. So, you know, wish they could share some of the rain with the with the dry places. <laughs> Dino, you got you got started in hydroponic because of me. That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's a lot of fun. You know, the, the thing with hydroponic is uh, it's, um, it's it seems very intimidating if you have never done it before. But honestly, it's uh, hydroponic is it's as simple as I showed you guys in the video. Uh, it's very, very forgiving. So you can make a lot of mistakes and it would be fine. You know, uh, the plants will still grow. I mean, it's not going to grow as well as it should, but even if you make a ton of mistakes, it's still going to grow. You're gonna you're gonna see it. It's it's very it's very fun. So that's that's the thing I love about hydroponic. Um, you know, you I, I try to keep it as simple as possible. That way, when people see it, they can they can take you know like you know it, it's so easy. I can do it. You know, so pick up pick up uh, hydroponic as a hobby. And uh, I'm telling you, you, it's gonna make you very happy because growing things just make you happy. 
in general. Uh, growing, you know, and especially you growing things that you can eat. So <laughs> that, that, that's the best part about it. You know, you, you get to grow the things that you eat. You know exactly what goes into what you put into the plant. So um, I guess I would say that would that would be safe because, you know, we control everything that's in it. Uh, th thank you, Jody. That was that. Uh, <laughs> good to know you're having fun with it. Yeah, Thomas, uh, I, I just started a few um, indoor projects right now. So I have a, a, a few cucumbers and then I'm going to grow Malabar spinach. You, you guys know Malabar spinach, right? Uh, I think uh, 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 people in the tropic, they know Malabar spinach. It's a, a very fast growing, very nutritious type of um, vegetable. And uh, th they grow amazing in the heat. And so right now my tent is in my garage. It's very, very hot. So nothing can grow. Like lettuce, of course, cannot grow. So I grow cucumbers, uh, melons, and um, uh, let's see, Malabar spinach. Yeah, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to be fun. So I have a a few videos coming up that I'm, I'm, I'm making right now. <laughs> Dino today, I'm keeping it simple today. Uh, this is all I have in my fridge. So cheers, Dino. <laughs> yep. Uh, all right. We have 37 people, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, as always, if you have questions, just type it into the comment section and uh, I will try to read it and um, respond. And uh, usually I, I make this live session to answer all the questions that I might have missed because uh, people ask questions in the video. And sometimes I don't um, I can't respond to all of them because uh, I, you know, I just sometimes I just get on and get off. So I don't have time to respond. So this is a time that I have to to uh, I saved so that I can respond to all of the questions that you have and you're going to get it live. So. Uh, um, oh, my baby is like sleeping, but he just wake. It's okay. He uh, usually wake up, cry, and then go back to sleep. Uh, what is the best supplement for rooting root cutting? Uh, I had I got several plants, several plants uh, this season. I wanted to clone. You know, Jeremy. Sometimes you don't even need uh, root hormone. Uh, I never use it because uh, it it works really well for me. Uh, if you could do without, I mean, if you absolutely need to use root hormone, they sell it at your local um, uh, root. Uh, what is it called? I, I forgot what it's called. I used it before, but I use I usually don't use root hormone anymore. So I just cut the plants. Uh, you know, make sure you cut like three or four branches, and then put in water under grow light, and it just grow. You know, save you some money if you don't need to use it. It's my baby nap time. And so it's usually when we put him down, he doesn't nap for like a, about 20 minutes and then he goes to sleep. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, uh, Sally uh, from Bangladesh. Here's still a little start for a hydroponic, but I need your help to start hydroponic solution. Uh, what do you mean you need my help to start? Are you um are you making the hydroponic solutions or are you are you buying the hydroponic solution because uh, i i think there are some that's already already out there that's available and all you have to do is uh buy the the nutrients and mix it according to uh what's what's listed in the label uh usually it's very very simple to make uh you, you for uh if you have never uh make hydroponic solutions or, or make hydroponic nutrients so what you do is you um, you you get your water, and then you add your solution, and then you check your pH because uh, sometimes the, the the solutions alter the pH a few points. So it's always uh, important to add the 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 solution first to the water, and then you can pH after that. And that way uh, you get the most accurate reading. Sharky from Ottawa, Canada, my neighbor. Hello there. 
I've read that honey works. Yes, um, people said that honey works. Uh, some people said that um, aloe, aloe gel works also because those things actually prevent um, bacteria from growing onto the, uh, the cutting parts so that it helps uh, the plant to, you know, stay healthy and, and not be infected. And uh, it does um, increase your chances of propagation. Ben, <laughs> hello, Ben. Good to have you, my friend. Uh, checking on the baby right now, yay. You know, technology is so crazy these days because you can see your baby from all the room. When I was little, you know, you, you go to bed and then <laughs> that's, that's basically it. <laughs> now, you know, you got to watch your kids from the monitor. So it's, it's, it's great. Technology has, got, has come a long way. <laughs> yeah, Dustin, he, he wants to show off a little bit. He wants to say hello. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, J.E. Armstrong, do you have a good way of identifying peppers that you're not sure about? Uh, not really, because so many pepper varieties look exactly the same. So if we can look at what the plants look like, we can give you an idea, but it's never going to be 100% accurate because there's so many uh, similar varieties that it's very, very hard to tell. Even the experts, they're not going to be able to tell. And uh, of course, with all the crosses and stuff like that, it's just impossible to tell because, uh, there, you know, there's a lot of people out there that take the same variety and they just rename it. And that would create more confusion to the, into the mix. So it's, it's going to be impossible. But, you know, if, if, if you show a picture of, of the plant and the fruits and all that stuff, we can help you identify and, limit, you know, sort of give you an idea of what it is. Oh, nice. You got your first cross of cantaloupe in Armenian cucumber. Wow, that's that's very interesting. I love Armenian cucumbers, so um, that would be interesting. So if, if you ever do grow that, I would love to see what the fruits look like. I wonder if it would be sweet or it would be like a cucumber or maybe in between. <laughs> uh, Thomas, I'm in Florida. Should I wait till January to grow hot pepper seeds like habanero and ghost? You know, if, if your temperature can stay between 75 degrees, uh, somewhere around there to 80, uh, any time of the year you can start it there because I grow pepper plants indoor all year long. And uh, as long as the temperature is constant, it doesn't matter what month you start it. it they're not going to know because they're tropical plants, you know, so they, they do prefer the warm weather. And also they, they prefer consistently warm temperature. So you can't, you can't have like a 75 degrees in the morning and then 55 degrees at night. I mean, it's still going to work, but it's going to, they're going to struggle a little bit. So if the temperature is consistently uh, the same, you would get the best result any time of the year. So like, for example, in my house, we, you know, we keep the temperature between 70 to 73 degrees Fahrenheit and I grow peppers all year long. Uh, so when you harvest young cucumbers, uh, oh man, I mean, if you, yeah, if you ever harvest that cantaloupe that is mixed with the Armenian cucumbers, wow, I would love to see that. That's that's going to be very interesting. Yeah, Jody, if, if that is your range right now, you can start it. And uh, peppers usually take around four to five months, uh, you know, to, to reach maturity and produce fruits. So if you, if you have that timeline and the temperature range, you're perfect to start right now. And uh, especially habanero. Habanero are super hot. Uh, they do love the cooler temperature, like in the 70s, you know, like 75 degrees is perfect for habanero. And uh, I grew a habanero, uh, a orange habanero a few years ago, and uh, around uh, 73 to 75 degrees, oh man, they start pushing out pots like crazy. I mean, there's so many pots on that habanero, it's ridiculous. So yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a good time. Uh, if you start the seeds, um, 
uh, keep it warm. You know, if you can put put a little dome on top, uh, if, if the if the temperature with inside the dome is 80 degrees or 85 degrees, the seeds sprouted uh, can sprout very quickly. Nicholas, Green Outdoors. Hello, my friend. Hello. Good to have you here. Uh, let's see. I have a question about peppers in the pot that are super hot. Caroline Reapers. Uh, yeah, what, what is your question, my friend? Soko? Sokos? Uh, let me let me grow, scroll up and, uh, and see what you, you asked. Uh, Okay, so you have some plants um, that are budding right now, but the temperature is going to get colder. So, uh, you, yeah, um, if uh, the, how cold is it? Um, because it, if it drops below seventy, they're, they're still going to be okay. But it gets if it gets into the fifty degrees and stuff like that, uh, the plants are going to start to kind of like fall back into. Um, it's it will slow down. It may drop some all the buds, and then it, it'll go to sleep. So uh, you can, if you can take it inside and provide it with artificial lights, and and keep the temperature uh, constant, it will continue to produce. So I have a grow tent. So in the in the winter time, I usually take my plants inside, and uh, and I you know I, when I keep the temperature constant, it will continue to produce until the temperature gets really cold, and then when it gets really cold, the plants sort of like go to sleep. So that time, what I usually do is I'll trim the plants down. So that it can get it can be smaller, and I can put it into uh, my tent. I can fit more of it into my tent, because uh, you know sometimes we don't have room inside. So trimming the plants back is an excellent idea, so that you can fit more plants, and then you can wait until the you know it's warmer next season. Then you can take them outside, and when you take it outside the next season, the plant is already mature, so it's going to grow for really fast from the large trunk. And it's going to produce a lot faster, so you get fruits almost like immediately, and instead of waiting a few months. Uh, most of your plants are ten months old. Yeah, if they're ten months old, they're very very mature, so they're they're ready to produce. They should already produce a lot of pots by this time, because usually six months at the most is all you need on most pepper varieties to get fruits uh, to harvest six months at the most because some would produce at four months some at five months and then you know some uh, of them may lag behind but six months is, is is really 10 months is a long time so you should already get a lot a lot of pods that are mature and ready to harvest already uh, you have light and wondering about pests so when you take your plants inside pests is a big issue so i made many videos on it already so you should check out uh, how uh, to overwinter plant my video. It'll tell you ex exactly what to do. But yes, you have to be very careful not to bring the pest inside because once you bring it inside, it's going to be very difficult to uh, to manage because it's going to spread to all your other plants. And then in, in, you, to treat everything, you got to like take it apart, you know, clean up the plants. It's going to be a lot of work. So the best thing is to do preventive measure. Make sure that you don't bring anything inside. And you know, you, it, it's going to be not 100%. But it's it, it's going to work to eliminate a lot of the problems that you may have. Uh, Martha, uh, check out the video that I made on on uh, how to overwinter pepper plants. You see exactly how much to trim. You can actually trim as much as you want. I mean, as much as the uh, you know the room that you have. If you have more room, you can trim less. If you have less room, you can trim more. You can trim all the way down to the trunk and just leave it around like two or three inches. It'll grow right back. Uh, your native sailing libuyo or bird chilies was starting to become endangered. Really? Uh, I have seeds for those and I grow them all the time. They, uh, they, uh, I didn't know they were endangered. If, if it is endangered, I just spread the seeds around so that they don't become endangered. 
Uh, M. Balu, uh, how long can the plants be okay in just Lika before buying fertilizer? The plants can live for like a few, um, probably up to a month or even longer uh, without anything, just water only. But but you would notice that they will start to struggle. So once w what they do is they'll start to turn yellow. The leaves is going to discolor. It's going to drop, and um, you know, and then the, the branch is going to start to shrivel up and then it's going to dry and die. But it, it'll take a few weeks before it, it will die completely. So, uh, yeah, make sure you get your nutrients back in there quickly, because once the plants start to become, uh, you know, show signs of problem, it, was, it start to wither. It's, it's very difficult to grow back the damaged part. You have to cut it off and it has to start over. So, uh, yeah, don't don't just put it in water for too long because you, you can damage the plant and then you're going to have to start. Um, kind of start over by cutting the plant back dramatically. Uh, yeah, you, I think Bismarck, you're right. Many people don't don't plant the Libuyo anymore uh, because I, I think they're 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 just um, people don't are not interested in them that much. But I think they're a great variety to do. You know, they're, they're, they're good to cook with them. You can eat them raw. You can add them to pickle. You can dry them. They're, they're great peppers. Cheers, y'all. <laughs> yeah, Dustin, uh, uh, the ceiling labuyo is very common. It's um, many, many people have seeds. Uh, I, I see a bunch of people on Pepper Lovers community. They they trade those seeds all the time. Uh, I think I got one. For, it's called the White Labuyo a few years ago. And I also have one that's, that's called the Native Labuyo to the Philippines. So I have a few varieties. It's somewhere in my uh, collections. I, I don't remember where it is right now. Uh, let's see. Hamp. Uh, I have grown chilies in... Aquarium water plus master blend, and I can definitely recommend it. Okay, that's very interesting. Um, I mean, you can you can actually grow. Wow, you use aquarium water and master blend. Okay, that's very interesting. Uh, I I usually just use the regular water, and then I mix it with the uh, master blend. And again, guys, I mentioned this before. Master blend is a is a great nutrient because it's very cost effective. It's very cheap. Uh, you buy them by the pound. Uh, you can actually just buy the 41838, which is the, the, the nutrients itself, and then you the calcium nitrate. And then the other one is magnesium sulfate. Is basically um, you can get that at your local uh, CVS and all that stuff. It's just the Epsom salt. So it's exactly the same thing. <laughs> so you don't have to buy, you know, you can buy it locally if you don't have it or if you think it's there, they're too expensive from the website. Uh, how long can I keep peppers in container happy? How many years can they live? Uh, pepper plants, you know, I, I talked about this in the last live. I had a friend on uh, on the pepper community, pepper lovers community, and he lives in Hawaii, and he has this native Hawaiian pepper, and he told me it was, uh, I think he said it was 15 years old or maybe 10. So there's certain varieties that can live up to 10 years, but most varieties, like the Thai, the Chinese, the, uh, the, all that stuff, they can live from three to five years, uh, easily three years. Uh, I, I have kept one for three years and it, it look, it's just fine. And uh, it just died because uh, of their, the, I left it out in the, in the, in the cold. <laughs> so if, if you can keep the, the temperature warm enough, like above 55 degrees Fahrenheit uh, in the winter time, they, they will live. They will live for a few years. And then, you know, once it's, it's warm, they'll grow right back. And then when it's cold, colder, they'll that, just cut them back that, so they can live for a long time. But yeah, there you go. Um, Ham just listed there. 
back Bacatum four to six years, pubescent five to ten years. Wow, I didn't know pubescent can live five to ten years. Uh, I love pubescent guys. Uh, they they're they're those uh, varieties that has like little hair on the leaves, like the ricados and stuff like that. Um, those usually uh, they like the colder temperature. They take a long time to grow too. I I, I grew up um, uh, some orange ricados before, and uh, it 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 took forever for the pods to come out. Dustin, I'm not sure it was the red Kona, but uh, somebody posted uh, the Hawaiian pepper, and I swear to you, it looks like a tree. It, it I mean, it it looks like a tree. <laughs> and he said it was, uh, I think it's either 10 or 15 years old. It's a very old plant. And I couldn't believe that it, uh, it was that old because I've never kept a pepper plant that long before. I think three years or close to three years was the longest I've kept the plant alive. And in hydroponic, uh, in hydroponic, I have kept uh, a pepper plant alive for almost two years in hydroponic. It's a lot of work. So I, I wouldn't do hydroponic peppers and to keep for too long. Cause it's just, you know, un unless you have that constant refill and dump refill automatically, then that's, that's a better way to do it. Um, ben, I, I saw that, you know, they sell the, all of those things as a single order. Yeah, I've seen it. And I also seen some that they sell uh, pre-mixed nutrients. And guys, don't buy the pre-mixed nutrients, okay? Uh, they're not good because, uh, you know, it could, you don't know when they mixed it. And also that you don't know how they mixed it because if you buy the nutrients yourself, you can mix it according to the, you know, what the plants like. So you can, you know, at a certain stage, you can you can increase the calcium nitrate, you know, and and just test with it. But uh, if they mixed it already, don't don't buy the premix. It, it's better to mix it yourself, because you know fresh is always best, right? Just mix it when the plants need it. <laughs> yeah, definitely, the premix can lock up your nutrients for sure. Um, yeah, uh, so I, I did a video recently on the, uh, the hydroponic system that, uh, a buddy of mine, Chris, Christopher Bransdell, uh, he has a channel, Christopher Bransdell, and he made the hydroponic system for me, um, uh, using 3d printing. It's amazing. Uh, it's a great system. I'm using it. It's sitting over there growing my white Thai variety pepper, man, it is, it is so cool. It looks, it looks great. And it's a beautiful unit. It's very powerful. And um, I tested it against the Aragorn. And, um, you know, the Aragorn just couldn't compare. It just it didn't have the intensity. So um, the plants that grow in this the system that Chris made me, it just it, look, it looks so much better. Oh man, Weedy boy, you caught the virus. I'm sorry to hear that, my friend. I hope you're you're doing fine. <laughs> but but since you're since you're stuck at home, get get your minds off of that and uh, grow some things. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you're growing a lot of the Thai the KS varieties. It's 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 a lot of fun. So yeah, uh, do do some growing, you know, and uh, get your mind off thing. And you know, it, it'll it'll keep you really nice and uh, and healthy <laughs> oh man that's great i'm glad to hear that oh god uh, i heard you know some people said it's terrible some people said they they're fine and um, you know but i'm glad you're okay and growing again <laughs> which which varieties are you growing right now grow, grow them in small units that way they can grow really fast. Like I, um, I usually grow a lot of my plants in in the, like water bottles, and within within like three months, I have peppers already. You guys, I, let me, let me show you the the system that I have with the Thai peppers. Let me get it for you. I'll show you.
look at this guys see the the beautiful thing about these units is they're portable and you can just remove them look at all these peppers i have <laughs> isn't that beautiful and it, it just grows in this little unit and uh, it's, it's very easy to maintain and um look look at all those peppers on top i i can't lean it because the water will come out but these these units are portable this is the unit i'm talking about you see Uh, it's a 3D printed unit, and uh, it, it can store a gallon of water. And uh, Chris made this for me, and I chose the color. I chose black and white. And, uh, you know, it, it just looks so futuristic, and, uh, you know, it just it, it's very elegant. Look, look at all these peppers, guys. <laughs> I, I can't lean it too much, but it's very beautiful. Okay, so yeah, I just wanted to show off that uh, that unit. Um, I made a video on the unit. If you guys are interested, you should check it out. It's um, it's the MTN Grow Station developed by Chris Bransdahl in Norway. Uh, he used 3D printing, and um, you know he built the light hood and all that stuff. So uh, uh, he bought all of the parts, like all the LEDs. And then the, the fans that are in there, he, he actually used the Noctua fans, which is a, is used for computer. So if you guys build computer, you would probably know those that the, the brand of, uh, of the fan. And that's the fan that is using to cool the, the light hood. It's, it's amazing. It's just the, the fruits are so uniform. They're like they're all the same size. And um, <laughs> yeah, Ham, that, that's the processor fan. Yeah, I use that as well. I have a, a huge one because I, I built my own gaming unit. And uh, my Noctua uh, fan is like, it's enormous. It barely fit into the full size uh, tower. But yeah, that's the same uh, fan that they used in, in that unit he built for me. So it's pretty cool. Oh, Chris is the reason you bought a fig tree. <laughs> you know, Chris is like uh, the only person that I know that has a full size grow room inside a house that looks it just looks like a regular room and he grows like uh aloe herbs and veggies cucumbers fruit trees and fig trees and all that stuff and uh it, it's very nice jimmy mr jimmy pickles is here guys the the, the famous jimmy pickles <laughs> thanks for joining jimmy jim good to have you here my friend Uh, the, the the fan the, the fan does not uh, strengthen the plant because it's actually cooling the vent hood so it nothing is blown onto the plant so it's not it doesn't strengthen the plant strength but I in inside my grow tent I have uh, fans that are circulating air through uh, uh, through the whole tent so when uh, the plants are young the air would would make it go back and forth like this and that does uh, strengthen the, the 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 branches Martha but this particular one doesn't. It's just uh, to cool the fan. Vince, <laughs> Vince, did you see the video I made for you on the last the last update? The bakha, uh, the elephant ear, man, it's grown ridiculous right now. I have a whole bunch of little babies, and uh, yeah, I, I it, it's probably going to uh, push the net cup, so I need to split it. Yeah, it's uh, it's really cool how fast it grows, it, and you know it's it's maintenance free, because um, it doesn't drink as as fast as I thought, so I, I left it there, and uh, I think I ch I changed the nutrients one time, and all I did was add nutrients, pour water into it, the water mixes up the nutrients on its own, and that's it. I didn't I don't do any pH, I don't do anything like that. Aaron, Mr. Aaron Hernandez, thanks for joining me, Aaron. Uh, guys, if you ever, if you have never been to Pepper Lovers Community before, Aaron Hernandez is here. He's the, uh, he's uh, our admin, and amazing guy. He's very, very great to work with, and uh, he does all of the. Uh, uh, he he basically runs the entire uh, site. So uh, 
there's your chance to meet him. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Vince, you know what? I'm going to let it I'm going to let it keep growing to see how big it can get. But I think I have to split the little babies because it's going to squish each other out. It's going to outgrow the pot eventually. So I have to divide the babies uh, and, and put it into soil. <laughs> That's just from one plant. Now I, I can probably have well, 10 plants already because they, they, they keep dividing. Have I ever grown ghost peppers? Yes, I grow pepper, ghost peppers uh, almost every year. Uh, this year I'm actually growing a ghost pepper cross with, uh, what is it? Jay's peach ghost cross with a primo. I'm growing that right now. I, I love ghosts, they're, they're really easy to grow and they're, they're very productive guys. The ghost peppers are one of the most productive uh, super hots. So if you like, uh, really hot peppers that produce well easy they're very easy to grow as well a ghost one is a, is a good one uh axel big fan just started to grow tomato plant and it has some pests uh, that makes the leaves sick i believe is from some kind of flies uh, what what kind of flies are, are you talking about like uh, the white flies you know like uh, if they're white flies um, you have to treat them quick because they can divide like crazy uh, white flies are the little little flies that always land underneath the leaf and anytime you shake uh, the, the 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 plant it starts to fly everywhere and then it will land right back so those are the white flies they multiply very fast and they will attack every single plant in the garden not just tomato uh, Jazz, thank you so much. And um, yeah, so make sure to treat those uh, um, uh, the white fly flies very quickly. Yeah, have you seen white flies? So, so I had white flies a uh, problem earlier this season, early in the season, uh, on my pear trees. I mean, they were everywhere. Every time you shake the the, the branches, they would just fly all over the place. So what I what I did was I took um, neem oil, like a little one teaspoon of neem oil, and I mix it with uh, my uh, you know the 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 thirty two ounce spray bottle I bought from Home Depot. Add a little bit of soap into it, and I I I, sp I shake it and I spray it all up and down the the tree, everywhere, all over the place. Um, you have to spray under the leaves too because they'll fly and they'll land right back and when they land onto the um you know the the the, the spray they'll get stuck and it, it'll just suffocate and it'll kill them and you do that every day uh one time in the afternoon when the sun the sun is not out until they're all gone so it takes around three to four days to get rid of them uh the first day there were a bunch of them i spray all over up and down the tree and then the next day, most of them have died, and there's only there's like little left. And I'll spray again because you gotta keep you gotta keep a schedule because if you don't, if you spray one time and you quit, what happened is the eggs that they have laid will hatch, and then they'll come out and they start all over again. So you gotta you gotta stay on top of them. You gotta kill them, and then you gotta keep going until that all the eggs hatched, and then you gotta kill those little that offsprings too, and then you all set. So if you're going to treat, make sure you continually treat them until everything's gone. If you leave them, if you treat one time and you stop, they'll come right back the next week. <laughs> and, and if you're going to use uh, neem oil and soap, make sure you do it when the sun is not out. Because the soap with the oil on top of the leaves and the sun beating down the leaves, it could potentially burn the plant. So just do it when the sun is down and uh, you should be okay. Uh, here comes Ron. Ron, I, I didn't answer your question. Have I grown bitter melon? Yes, I grow bitter melon all the time. And uh, I actually love bitter melon. I'm the only one in my family that enjoys uh, bitter melon. They're very easy to grow. 
I grew the the Japanese kind, uh, the Indian kind, and the Chinese kind. There's there's different varieties. One, the Chinese ones are the, the enormous big ones, um, and they're not as bitter. The Indian ones are much smaller and they're very very spiky. They have a lot of little spikes, but they're much smaller. And the Japanese ones are all thinner and they're really really long. I think the Japanese ones are the the, the most nutritious one, and. Uh, I grew. If you, if you go if you go to my Instagram page, I, I posted a bunch of picture um, two seasons ago of of the bitter melon. Yeah, I love those things. Mantis, thank you, my friend. I'm doing great. Hope you're well. Uh, Sally, uh, yes, yellow sticky traps will work, but the problem with sticky trap is they have to fly into it. So, you know, that most of them, they usually land under the leaf and they don't fly around until you, you know, you shake the branch or something like that. So the sticky trap will catch them, but you're not going to catch all of them. So uh, it's for me, I don't I don't use those things because they really don't work. I mean, they, they work to to reduce the numbers, but they don't work to get rid of, you know, of, of all of the, the population in the garden. Oh, look at Ben. Ben has a has an idea right here. Um, Thermocell mosquito repeller. Oh man, that's I should try that. <laughs> Thermocell mosquito repellent. I've never done it before, but I, you know I'm always up for some new uh, ideas to, to try, because white flies are the worst guys. They're they're just they're just madness. If you have white flies, it's it's, it's it's crazy. They they spread like crazy. I, I hate those things. White flies and aphids are the worst. Uh, yes, you can trim bitter melons. Um, uh, you know, sometimes bitter melons. So with most melons or climbing vines like cucumbers, melons, watermelons, bitter melons, so you have your main vine, you know, your main vine is the one that comes out first and it just keep growing. And then you have your side vine that spreads out as it grow. Um, a lot of the times if you grow inside, you try to reduce the side vines because what happened is the side vines will suck up a lot of the resources. And also because it will create so much, um, you know, plants, plants in the grow room that you should reduce some of the side vines out so yes you can trim if you want to but don't trim the main vine because that's the main vine that you know that helps the plant grow all over the place uh try to reduce the the side vines that you should cut is the one that not are not producing any fruits so uh you uh, usually cucumbers what they do is they they call it like in tomato they have suckers you cut the the suckers uh in um cucumbers you have the side vines you cut the side vines and let the plants grow up, and uh, that that usually works really well to to reduce the amount of space that they take up. Oh yeah, spider mites are are pretty bad also, <laughs> especially if you have them inside your grow room. Yeah, spider mites, aphids. I mean, any, actually, any type of mites are are bad. I hate mites because they're so small, they're hard to see. So when you don't see them until uh, they have already damaged the plants and then you're like, oh man, I, I didn't spot them earlier until I, you know, you see problem with the, with the plant and then you inspect and then you can see those mites. So yes, the mites, mites are a big problem. All right, Ron, that's great. I, I'm glad it, it's going well for you. <laughs> look at Ben. Ben is giving me all kinds of ideas right now. I, I'm, I'm going to have to look that up. It also works on mites. Interesting. That's great. How do you deal with spider mites indoors? Um, I've had spider mites one time, and uh, usually what I... Uh, it wasn't a big problem because I spot them pretty early and I didn't have a lot of plants. 
when you have a lot of plants and then you have spider mites, man, it's, it's a big problem because you got to treat all the plants. So what you do is, um, again, I always use, I try to not use any chemical. So soap spray with neem oil works really well. Uh, you have to, again, spray on top, on bottom, all over the leaves. And um, Ben, I'm not sure, you, a thermocell, would that work? I, I haven't tried, but yeah, neem oil uh, for mites. You know, recently I, I use a product, um, I forgot what it was called. Uh, it, it, it works on mites and also fungus and stuff like that. Uh, and, I, and I mix it. Uh, it's a powder kind. Let, let me look it up. Okay, it's called the Bonite Sulfur Fungicide. And I, bu I bought it by the pound bag. And uh, what I what I did was uh, I, I mix it according to what the uh, the instruction said. I think it was one teaspoon or one tablespoon per per um, gallon of water. And uh, I, I spray my indoor grow tent um, like all over, upside down, inside out, on the outside, on the inside before I put my plants in there. So that's how I, I do the cleanup process. So I, I clean the tent, I wipe it down with soap and all that stuff, alcohol, wipe it all clean. And then I spray the tent uh, with the fungicide, sulfur bonite fungicide. And then I wait about a few days and then I started to plant my plants in there. And so far guys, I have not had any pests in there right now, which is, you know, which is really um, cool because I, I use it, always get these these little mites on there. I forgot what they're called. I think um, uh, broad mites. Yeah, it, it was broad mites. I always get those guys in my tent. But th this year, I haven't gotten them yet because I, I cleaned the tent out and I did the sofa spray and all that stuff. And it, <laughs> it's been working. So right now, my cucumber plants are just super, super happy with, with, uh, with none of those mites in there. But yeah, preventive measure is great. Um, you know, clean up your tent. Because some of these mites, you know, sometimes the, the eggs are left behind somewhere in the tent and they, they'll just they'll just stay around until you, you start your new sets of plants and then they'll just come out. So, uh, yeah, you know, keep the plant, keep the tent nice and clean and uh, treat it before you uh, you put some new plants in there. And then uh, that would reduce the chances of having bugs and pests and all that stuff. And yeah, Ben said. Thermocell should work on mites also. So broad mites, spider mites, and all that stuff. Now I need to look up this thermocell. What I'm not sure what it is. I've never used it before. Mosquito repellent. Oh, that is yeah, that's that that's a great idea, Ben. Thanks for that. Yeah, the, the mites are really tough. Uh, sometimes the, I think the, the eggs of the mice can live like three or four months, or even longer w without plants, you know? And then when, when you have a plant, they, they, they somehow can sense it and they'll hatch. It's crazy. Uh, is there a pepper lovers community outside of Facebook? Yes, there is one on Reddit and there's one on MeWe. Uh, Reddit is very uh, is a very popular place, but I think uh, the biggest community for pepper lovers is on Facebook. So guys, join us there. And uh, there's a lot of interesting posts right now about all kinds of peppers, all kind of crosses and uh, um, all ch challenges and all that stuff. Oh, yes, Dustin. And don't forget Discord. There is a pepper lover on Discord. So um, join there as well. It's a great place. Uh, Anna, have you experienced tomato splitting in hydroponic system due to taking in too much water? Uh, yes, I've had a few tomatoes uh, split 
but it, it's very rare. It could be because of the, the varieties you're growing. Because usually, um, I, I've grew tomatoes for many years. I, I, I normally don't get tomatoes split. Uh, tr what 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 variety of tomato did you grow uh, that have those split? Because uh, I grew um, berries, crazy cherries. Oh man, those things produce like crazy. Uh, I grew some uh, sun sugar, sun gold, and my own variety. And the, I think I saw like maybe two or three fruits that split out of the hundreds that I have. Yeah, Ben, I'm gonna you you sold me on the thermosel, buddy. So I'm gonna I'm gonna really try that. Especially on my back patio because I do have mosquitoes. <laughs> so I'm I'm definitely going to have it. Uh yeah, Anna, you're not you're not gonna get splits. Um uh, the you know, usually tomato with split is when you have inconsistent watering. For example, like you know, in your garden, when you have a ton of rain, uh, you know, one week and then the next week, everything dried up and then all of a sudden it dried up for a long time and then you get a ton of rain again. And then that's when it split. So inconsistent water will will, will cause your tomato to split. But when you grow in in a hydroponic, the, the water is always consistent because it's, it's the same. It's sitting in water. So it, it should be fine. I, I haven't had any splits issues. Uh, have I ever tried any flowers variety in hydroponic? I think I've grown uh, coleus. I, I, I'm not sure coleus is a flowering. Um, it, are they considered flowers? Because <laughs> they do have flowers, but coleus works really well. Um, coleus, for some reason, they they just love hydroponic. They grow super well. I think they're just like basil or mint or whatever, they, they, they grow well in hydroponic too. Uh, let's see. I, I deal. Uh, you you dry cracky for a while, and your pepper plants grew well, and all of a sudden they start to die. Uh, it could be because uh, inconsistent refill. For example, if you grow in cracky, right? The cracky method meaning um, there's no aeration. So what happened is if there's no aeration. So let's just say you start the plant out, right? Here's your water level. It's right on the roots. So as the plants get bigger it bigger, it drink, it drink, it drink, and then the level would drop, right? So the level would drop down to here, and the space is around here is how the plant breathe. And so when if you happen to refill, you have to keep the level here. If you refill it back to here, your plant is going to drown because there's no spot for the plants to breathe. So that that is the biggest problem in cracky uh, hydroponic. When people forgot and then refill all the way back up to the to the original line. And then the plant just basically suffocate and die because it can't breathe anymore. So if, th if that's your case, that try to fix that. When you refill, do not refill all the way here. If your water level is here, refill down to here maybe, or a little bit here, but never go all the way up here. And if you do that correctly, your plant will not die. Uh, let's see, hungry for heat. How long does it usually take for a full-size ghost pepper pot to change color from green to red? It, it, sometimes it takes a long time. It could take, you know, up to three weeks. Green pot all the way to red. Sometimes even longer, you know, it depends on the... Uh, you can try to speed it up a little bit by... If you waited too long, let's say you waited three weeks already and the plant hasn't um, ripened up yet, just take your oldest pot that you know pull it off and when you when you pull that pot off it'll 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 make the plant <laughs> kind of it kind of trick the plant to go ahead into a production to produce the red pods so yeah 
uh, pick pick the oldest pod if you waited too long already, like say three weeks already, and the pod hasn't ripened up yet. Just pick one of the oldest pod, and then it it'll slowly start to ripen. <laughs> Only flowers you need is on your peppers. <laughs> Dustin, I agree. <laughs> Nice, Ben. That's great. Um, hydroponic can grow most plants really well, especially all of the herbs. Man, you know, like basil, when I grow uh, hydroponic basil, I get so much basil that you would never be able to use up all of the basil. And I started with one plant. So I started one plant and I'll use it and I'll clone another and then I'll clone another, I'll clone another. And then soon I have so much basil that I just like, there's no way to use all of the basil. Uh, uh, sweet basil, Thai basil, they're just amazing when, when growing in hydroponic. Uh, Dustin, you know, that question come up very, very often. Do hydroponic vegetable and fruits have all the secondary and micronutrients and uh, healthy properties as growing in, in high quality living soil? You know, there's a, there's a study that has been done on that. And uh, they conducted on actually on basil. And they find that hydroponic basil is just as healthy uh, with the properties as in soily grown hydroponic, I mean, soil grown um, basil. So I don't know for sure because the only article that I read was on, on basil. And yes, it does have all of the properties of the regular soil grown hydro, I mean, uh, basil. <clears throat> and, uh, I, you know, guys, I think, I think uh, hydroponic is the future. And uh, the reason for that is, you know, because uh, the, the, the world's population is just keep expanding and growing. And eventually we're going to maybe run out of space. Uh, you know, in Texas, for example, I've been in Texas for uh, um, probably like almost 30 years now. And uh, I mean, it just keeps getting bigger. There's just more and more and more people all the time, you know. So uh, the where I live right now used to be nothing but barren land is just like grass and and that's it it's just grass and one lane and then years later like now i mean this place you you couldn't tell that what it was before anymore there's like there's no grass anymore it's just houses and 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 stuff <laughs> so you know what people have to do now is grow where you live right grow in the city grow where you live grow in your house grow in your garage there's places in taiwan that that basically they just have an, a, a huge building with like 30 40 levels and they just grow in there and the good thing about that is they can grow it there and then ship it to, to the local places down the street you know so there's no you don't have to harvest your vegetable or fruits early you can just harvest it fresh and then deliver it to the grocery store, to the restaurants and all that stuff. And like, you know, it, it tastes just as good. I mean, have you ever got, have you guys ever try hydroponic lettuce and soil lettuce at the same time? You're not gonna be able to tell the difference. <laughs> I, I've done it so many times, you know, I, I have a series on hydro versus soil. You guys should check it out. There's no way to tell. Uh, I grew melons, I grew this Japanese melons recently few months ago and I've never done it in hydroponic before and I thought like oh man you know I grew this uh these melons in in hydroponic they're gonna taste bland they're not gonna you know you're not gonna it's not gonna taste as good as soil and when I tasted that melon 
oh my god it tastes like brown sugar guys it's there's no way to tell there's no way to tell so yes it's 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 so much different now like in the past because i've done it hydroponic for a while in the past you know because some people still ask do you flush out the nutrients before you harvest it and eat your your hydroponic uh, vegetables because in the past you really had to do that you got to flush it before you eat it now i just pick the, the 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 hydroponic vegetable hydroponic fruit strawberries or whatever and i just eat it sometimes i just go into the grow room and i eat it right there <laughs> <laughs> so they, they taste really good it is there's no way to tell it's 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 um i think it's the future once once people can figure out how to cost effectively grow um organic hydroponic it's gonna take over it's gonna be the new thing because you know it uses less water because you know i i for example i've, I've done it many times before i grow hydroponic lettuce right all it, all it takes is one gallon of water for the whole entire life cycle of the lettuce. And you can harvest it, a big old lettuce head, one gallon of water. And uh, it's as simple as, you know, you mix your nutrients, put it in under grow light, and you have a lettuce head in 30 days. And the lettuce head will keep feeding you because when you grow them at home, you don't just cut the whole lettuce head. You just cut the leaves that you need. And then in a few days, all of those leaves will grow right back. So one lettuce head becomes like three lettuce heads, you know? So it, it's a it's a really neat way to grow plants and have it fresh and then have it keep producing using less water. <laughs> so yes, guys, I highly recommend, uh, you know, getting into the habit of, habit of, of hydroponic. It's, it's very easy. Grow light has come down so much like in the past, you know, they, they, they sell these UFO grow lights, right? It's very small. It costs $400, guys, $400 for a grow light that is so simple. And now for a $400, you can get like a huge grow light that would fit a four by four grow tent that you can, that you can grow like 50, uh, not sorry, like 30 lettuce heads in a, in a grow, in, in, in that grow tent. So you can have lettuce forever. <laughs> yeah, Ben, you have a great point that you have a jump on the growing season because you can grow it all year. Uh, you, there's no weeding involved. There's no tilling. No, none, none of those stuff. Um, and you don't have to, you know, harvest your lettuce in the in the, in the heat of the summer you know, sweating, chopping the lettuce and stuff like that. And then they just regrow. You, you know, you don't, you harvest what you need and uh, you don't harvest the whole thing. And they keep coming back and coming back and coming back. <laughs> yeah, Aaron, Aaron, you know, remember back in the day, uh, I bought some fluorescent grow light. It was the T5s. These are T5s. And uh, it is, the, uh, it was super heavy. And to replace the bulb, it's like $30 for a single bulb to replace. And I need to replace eight of those. You know, every few years, I got to replace it. And it was very expensive at the time, you know. <laughs> and then comes the LED grow light. And then, uh, you know, the LEDs were like all purple. It was the most annoying thing ever. I, I can't stand those purple grow lights, guys. Uh, but I didn't have a choice. That's what they made back then. I'm so glad these days that they changed grow lights from all those purples and blue into the regular, you know, regular grow lights, you know? So uh, things have come a long way and the prices are just so cheap these days. You can get like a $20 grow light and you can grow a few head of lettuce. That's, that's how cheap it is. And grow tents used to be like six, 700 bucks for like a four by six. Right now you can get a four by four by six for under a hundred dollars grow tent and in in a few months growing lettuce it'll pay for itself so yes it, it's very very cost effective these days so yeah and and you can grow a lot of a lot of vegetables <laughs> especially if you grow herbs and lettuce if you grow herbs and lettuce you get your money back in no time 
Uh, yes, you can basically grow almost anything in uh, modern LED fixture, Spencer. I have grown uh, Asian pears in LED, which is a fruit tree. Uh, I grow my figs. My figs have fruits now under my grow lights. I clone the figs, by the way. Uh, I propagated the fig, tre fig trees and I grew it under grow light. And now they have little fruits now. I'm very excited. Yep, LEDs are also very cheap to operate. Uh, I have two grow tents with a big old LED grow light, and uh, you're not going to notice much of a difference on your electric bill. <laughs> it's it's very cost effective, uh, and you know the, the the best part is you shouldn't think about the cost. You should think about the joy you get from growing plants under those grow lights, and also you know the the, the, the return, which is the fruits and the vegetables and all that stuff that you get, it, it's just crazy. It's like you get f freshest produce all the time. Freshest herbs like basil. I love the, the, the sweet basil. And anytime I need it, I just go and grab it. And uh, peppers, like I just showed you guys earlier in my grow box, I just go there and pick a few peppers. Guys, fresh peppers are just amazing. It, it, it's so much better than when you go to the stores and buy them because, you know, some peppers uh, in grocery stores are usually shipped from, um, from Mexico or somewhere far, right? So what they do is they have to pick the peppers early in order to get it shipped here before they start to ripen up because if they pick the peppers when they're ripe and then the time that they get they take to ship it here, it's going to shrivel up, it's going to go bad, and it, it's not going to have like the optimal flavor. So um, yeah, grow it yourself. You're going to be very happy. I'm telling you, I get a lot of joy seeing plants grow. And sometimes I spend a lot of money on grow lights, on equipments that I test and, and all that stuff. And I really don't mind it because it makes me really happy on the inside. And when you make it makes you happy, you, you sort of like, you, you feel better and then, you know, you're just healthier. When you're happy, you're a healthier person. <laughs> and you're eating the, the vegetable that you, you grow, so it makes you very happy. So yes, good stuff. <laughs> totally, joy over cause any day because joy will give you better health that means you don't have to visit a doctor very often. And you know visiting a doctor is very expensive. <laughs> so spend more money on yourself to make yourself happy, to give you the best stuff, instead of giving the money to, to your doctor. Wow, Channel 6, that's very good of you to do that. Nice. Zen Garden for a friend who is passing away. Yeah, that's a, that's a great thing. You know, an, another good thing about being a gardener is like you always grow in excess. You always grow more than you need. And uh, what do you do with the extra? You always share them with other people. That's the, that's the great thing about gardening. You all, you know, the thing is, when you garden, you don't think about gardening for yourself. You always think about gardening for more people to use. So when I grow things, I, you know, you, I, all I need is one raised bed and that would feed my entire family. But I have six or seven raised beds because you, what I'm thinking is I can grow enough so that I can give it to other people. <laughs> and I think most people that are gardening feel the exact same way. You always grow a ton of stuff so that you can give some of the stuff away to, to friends and families and neighbors and stuff like that. Little Garden, thank you so much, my friend, for that donation. But yeah, and uh, my, my peppers, you know, I, I, one pepper plant that I showed you guys earlier is enough for me, but I have like 20 or 30 pepper plants. And the reason is I harvest those peppers and I give them all away. <laughs> I give so many peppers away, and I think all I think every pepper growers do the exact same thing as me. They give most of it away because there's no way you can eat all that, you know. 
you can make hot sauce, you can dry them, but how much can your family use? You know, I, I have a family of four and the children don't eat hot peppers. So it's me and, and the wife. And she doesn't even eat, she loves pepper, but she doesn't eat that very often because it's just, um, you know, she just doesn't do that. And I don't eat peppers every day and I have like 20 or 30 plants. And I, I have so many peppers. <laughs> And I'm just growing it so that I can give it to other people. And at the same time, I'm experimenting. You see, I'm getting the joy of experimenting, growing peppers. And then what I get out of the peppers, I give it to other people. And they're, you know, they, they, they're happy with me. Uh, what what does Kang mean? Uh, I don't know. I, I think it means the wisdom in, in, in Vietnamese. I think that's that's uh, that's my actual name. Uh, so I yeah, I think it, it meant wisdom. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I need to look it up and, and, and tell you guys. But I think that's what it meant. Uh, Von Seeker, uh, what nutrients do I use for peppers in DWC? I use uh, Dyna Grow and Dyna Bloom. Uh, I also use, uh, I use Master Blend before, that works just fine. Uh, the reason I use Dyna Grow and Dyna Bloom is because that's what I have right now. Uh, they, they all work fine. I, I've used General Hydroponic, the Flora series. Uh, I've used Master Blend, it works fine. I, I use Dyna Grow, uh, Dyna Bloom. Uh, Dynagrow and Dyna Bloom works really well for peppers because, uh, you know, you, you can, go, for vegetative stage, you just use the grow portion. And once they start to flower, you switch over to bloom. And when you switch over to bloom, it, it does help with the fruiting and flowering and stuff like that. So it gives the plants exactly what they need uh, at the certain stage that they need it. And that works. Uh, I've used Maxi Grow before too. Uh, you, they they also make Maxi Bloom. So uh, if, if Ma Maxi Grow has too much nitrogen and your plant is blooming, you just switch to Maxi Bloom and you should be fine. And that that should work. <laughs> I'm I'm the Merlin of gardening. No, you know actually I I I learned a lot from other people. You know, a lot of the stuff that I that I that I'm trying in the garden, like in the soil garden and stuff like that, is uh, there's tips that people give me. Like um, uh, sometimes Aaron Hernandez is on here. He's a he's the admin of Pepper Lovers. Uh, sometimes I just I just ask him stuff like, "Hey, what do you do when uh, this happens and all that stuff?" Or my my buddy Jay, he he has a a, a huge garden and his pepper production is just nuts. So I always ask him, hey, what do you use for your plants to produce so much? And so when I get those tips, then I use them and, uh, and then I'll share it back with you guys. So a lot, a lot of the stuff that I, I use, I learned from other people. Uh, the hydroponic in the beginning, when I, when I first started doing hydroponic, uh, the cracking method, I actually learned a lot from, uh, the, uh, from Bobby, which is the MHP gardener. If you guys, you guys should definitely check his channel out. He, He's one of the earlier people that did a hydroponic, like way back when. And I did learn a lot from Bobby. And I think he stopped making videos. But, um, and then from what I learned uh, from Bobby, MHP Gardener, I, you know, I test more on my own. I, I do, you know, I test the limits of the, of the peppers. I test the limits of the nutrients. I, you know, and then I note down exactly what I tested and all that stuff. And over years, I, I pick up neat, neat little tricks here and there that I shared with you guys. So that, that's, how, that's how I learn. I, I experiment. That's what I love. I love to research and I love to experiment. And so 
uh, that's how that's really how I I learn hydroponic. Yeah, Ben, uh, MHP is a great resource for hydroponic. Uh, he's amazing. Uh, I, I again in the beginning, that's who I learned hydroponic from. I watch his videos, and he he made it really simple. And uh, from what I learned from him, I took the knowledge that I learned from his channel. And then I added my own spin by experimenting, noting what I did wrong, noting what I did right. And uh, yeah, and so it, it's great. Uh, you always learn from other people. So um, um, research also. And, and you know, when you do your own test, that's when you learn the best. And so uh, when I do my own experiments over there, and then, you know, also making videos really helped me document the process that I did over the years. So sometimes, in the beginning, I did everything wrong, guys. Uh, it was just bad. But because I documented everything, it helped me go back and learn what I did wrong to try to improve it in, in the new new stuff that I'm doing. And um, again, so I go from being so meticulous about you know, adjusting pH, using certain nutrients at certain stages of the plant cycle. I did all of that, right, to now where I just say, you know what? Maxi grow or Dyna grow, Dyna bloom. That's it. <laughs> no pH, no nothing. And and I was like, you know, can I push that boundary? Can I push that limit and have the plant still produce what I do? Less work, less work, more production is really what I want. And uh, because it makes it more fun, you know, when it's easy, it makes things more fun to do. And so I keep it as simple as nutrients and water, and bam, that's it. <laughs> And I made many videos on this thing, and uh, it grows just fine. The peppers that I just showed you guys in the hydro uh, in hydroponic uh, unit that I showed earlier, that's it. All I did was nutrients and water. That's it. And um, so I use two kinds, right? I use Dyna Grow and Dyna Bloom because that's what I have available. So during vegetative stage, which is the plant is still growing and growing and growing, I use the Dyna grow. As soon as the plants get to the full size and they start to produce flowers and, and, and I'm ready for the plant to produce fruit, I switch over to Dyna bloom and that's it. And then occasionally, if you see there's signs of issues that the plant is turning yellow and it needs certain things, I, I use cow mag. Cow mag and Dyna bloom. That's it. As simple as that as it. And no, I don't pH, I don't do any of those. I just add the nutrients to the water, shake the water up, and pour it into my hydroponic uh, system, and done. <laughs> uh, would living soil or water only soil be good for peppers? I have two extra bags of Great Lake water only soil. Yeah, I mean, living soil is the best type of soil that you can use for your peppers. Um, again, if you grow in soil, the most important thing to do is give the soil a good mixture of, you know, like living soil is always the best, of course. Like if you make your own organic um, soil, worm casting and all that stuff, and that's basically all you need. But if you have to mix your own soil, try to... Um, you know, add a lot of organic matter into there. That way the plants can grow without too much fertilizer. Yeah, you're right, Ben. You have to get a good feel for what you're doing. Yes, for sure. You know, um, here's another trick, guys. Uh, it, it, when you're doing hydroponics, right, sometimes things just are not available. For example, I have a, uh, I used to have a pH meter that I don't, I no longer use. And, um, you know, over time, the pH meter stopped working. And, you know, I, I just didn't want to uh, buy another pH meter. And so I know what I did was I, bu I bought the pH down. And I, I, I know that I'm going to use pH down. And my water is always constant at the same uh, pH. So if I drop, how many drops of pH down does it take for my water to stay at 6.5 pH? So I count the drops. So after that, when my pH meter broke, I don't use it anymore. I just count the drops and I'm done. 
<laughs> so, so you know, you don't have to buy a new pH meter because sometimes they could cause it a lot. So, uh, you know, test with what you have, note it down, remember, and then the next time if you don't have the equipment like a pH meter, you, you know how many drops you need to use, done. <laughs> Yeah, Axel, uh, the, you know, I used to buy pH meter all the time. You know, it, it, it breaks, I buy a new one. And now I just don't, I don't, I don't even use it. I don't even have a pH meter right now. The last one broke about a few years ago and I haven't bought one since because I don't use pH meters. <laughs> I mean, it's not a good thing because, uh, you know, again, you know, if you look up P uh, hydroponic, uh, there's a chart. And the chart will tell you at what pH the plants can take up certain nutrients correctly. So at 6.5 is where the plants can take all of the nutrients it needs to, to give it the optimal growing uh, you know, ability. So uh, yes, pH is very important. So what, what, what the most important thing is, um, you know, yes, get to know your water, you know, how, know your water. And then also recognize how much, how many, how much, how many drops you put in there before um, your nutrients is balanced. And then after that, if you forget, if, if your pH meter run out of battery, if you lose it, if you broke it or whatever, it still be consistent because you drop the same exact thing every time. And again, hydroponic is very forgiving. Uh, they, you know, sometimes you don't have to be always on point or exact. It, it could be, it could be off and the plants will still grow. Yes, Ben is right. The municipal water is not gonna go to change too much. It's usually very constant. Uh, wherever you live, it's gonna be always the same. Jake from Australia. Hello, my friend. Good to have you here. Uh, no, I, I have not tried the ebb and flow method. Uh, usually I keep things very simple. <laughs> you know, I, I try the easiest thing that I could do and easiest thing that I can find and the cheapest things that I can make, which is a regular tote and uh, water and nutrients. And that's it. <laughs> All right, um, guys, I have been talking for an hour and almost 30 minutes. I, I have to get off. So um, uh, I, I'm probably going to start to do some gardening in a bit. But thank you so much for joining me today. And uh, it was great. It was fun. I hope you get some um, some information out of the video. And uh, if you guys, uh, you know, if you have questions uh, uh, that you posted in the videos uh, that you watched that I don't get to answer, just save it. And then, you know, when I go live, you can just ask me here because, you know, I, I, I make this, uh, this time to answer all of the questions you guys have and answer it live so that you get the, the information right away. So maybe we'll do it again next week. Thank you, everybody. Bye.